Well, welcome, everyone, to another session of Conscious Gatherers. Tonight, it's myself, Terry Palma, and Bev. Um, our other part of the panel have other duties. One is traveling and visiting in Arizona, and another is helping with a family member. So it's just going to be Bev and I tonight, but we'll give you everything we got. Um, Bev, are you there? I am. Welcome, everybody. This is our episode 29. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We started this, I think, back in February. So here we are, episode 29, and we're going to getting close to the end of the year. And we have a lot of exciting things to talk about tonight. And um, I'm going to start this off because uh, Terry has a lot to say about this, too. So um, uh, we're going to start off with, uh, I'm calling it Be Yourself, because those are the two words I got earlier today and loud and clear. And then later in this podcast, um, I was given uh, the 2021 Outlook. And uh, I thought you all might want to know what that is. So um, hold on, and um, I'll give you that information after a bet. All right, Terry, you're ready to go. So uh, be yourself. Absolutely. And it's like, okay, what does that mean? And I had uh, gotten the words, your own fraudulent actions are being exposed. I'm like, okay. Well, I hope, I hope well, ours aren't fraudulent. <laughs> I don't know how to not that, not but... on this podcast, but I think it's in our lives or other, li- you know, or other aspects of, or other lies that uh, we've all had our own fraudulent actions and they're being exposed. So, so there's a lot of things are coming up. Um, well, you know, what's been talked about now, fraud, right, uh, in the elections. And, uh, and so I think that's why this came up, because um, we all have what, we're, what I guess are called fraudulent actions. And, uh, and you know what? That means were we, um, were we ourselves or not? I asked what that means. So, um, right. yeah, yeah. So if we're not mm-hmm. ourselves and we're trying to be somebody else, what are we doing? Committing fraud against ourselves. So there you go. That's what that means. Absolutely. And you brought up today in our meeting, uh, be yourself. And I think that's also saying that if you're not being yourself, then it likelihood is you could be doing that fraudulent self coming out. And it's, you'll be caught for it. It's, those things aren't accepted anymore. People can see through them, and they're not going to stand for it. So it's always good to be yourself. Um, I think, and if you can't, it's probably best to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so on that, on being yourself, I think all week, and since our last, actually two weeks, I've been, I've been thinking about the creation and the formula for creation and, you know, what, what it's all about and the I am and so I, I've gone to Neville to get some nuggets, and I'll, I'll read from him in a little bit, but also take condense what it is. So in all religions, you know, we've, we've been told that God is within us. God is closer than your breath. Um, God, you and God are one. In fact, Jesus was crucified because when they said, who is God, he said, God, I am. And what he was saying is not so much Jesus, the physical man, is I am God. What he's saying is I am. That phrase, that unconditioned consciousness of being is God. And then when you are one with God, you take it to the next level. I am that I am. Now you've conditioned the I am, which is unconditioned consciousness, and you've made it a conditioned consciousness, and that's what we are in the physical world. We've conditioned consciousness to produce something. And the Bible, throughout the Bible, there are all of these allegories and stories that come up. And, you know, I've always thought, why are they like that? Why aren't they just straightforward and say what you mean and, and, and tell us as it is? Well, you've got to remember, it was wit- written in the East, and we're here in the West, and their concept of how to communicate things is totally different than what we are here in the West. We like it. Hey, give it to me. It's paid for. Give me the bottom line. Don't sugarcoat it. And in the East, it's different. 
So the I am, which is the strongest phrase of anything, and in fact the beginning phrase of creation, is again the unconditioned consciousness of being aware of yourself, of being aware. When you start to condition it and make sentences afterwards or phrases after it, I am that I am, I am sick. Those are creative words that you're creating uh, in your world. And so it's very important, and tonight I'm going to go over how you can change your world by the law of creation, as, as I believe it, as I read and, and what I understand. And it's understanding the I am and the I am that I am. In fact, if you remember, in I believe it's in um, Exodus, when Moses was on the mount and he was being instructed by the, the flaming bush to go tell the people and free the people, he asked, you know, who do I send? It's, it, it, how do I tell them who sent me, you know? How are they going to believe me? And the flaming bush, God, said, I am that I am. And it's all the way through through all the religious texts. I have, I'm not a scholar in any of them, but I know the Bible better than most of them. So in, in the Bible, it's in, in Isaiah, it says, I am the Lord, and there is no God beside me. Declares my consciousness. This is him saying, this declares my consciousness to be the one and only Lord, and beside my consciousness, there is no God. In Psalms, be still and know that I am God, means that I should still the mind and know that consciousness is God. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, Exodus. I am the Lord, that is my name. That's in Isaiah. Now that you have discovered, now I'm sharing with you the I am, your consciousness, the unconditioned consciousness to be God, do not claim anything to be true of yourself that you would not want to claim to be true of God. For in defining yourself, you are defining God. Those are words from Neville's book. Um, So remember, that which you are conscious of being is that which you have named I am, God, and God and man are one, and your Father and you are one. So the unconditioned consciousness or the I am and that which you are conscious of being are the one thing. So whatever you define yourself as I am, this, that, whatever, you've already included God in it. You are. We are actually the people, the the consciousness that the world and us have been looking for to save us. We are our own saviors. And that's not being arrogant. That's using the law and the law of creation. So here's how, if you want to change your circumstance, and it's everywhere in the Bible. It's in, it's in the story of um, Noah and his three sons. Those, those are representing what I'm going to share with you now. Um, so let's take your, your predicament that you're in now, that you're aware of, whatever it may be, and you want to change What's going on in your life right now? Well, you have to take the I am and realize that I am and expand it in in thought. And you have to picture that which you desire to be. That's the I am, the that I am part. So you you picture that which you desire to be in the future, but you picture it now. And you must feel it. It must be real. It can't just be something you're wishing for. Because the feeling is what gives us the emphasis. It's what gives the impetus for it. And then you trust in that. You trust in that and stay in that feeling until it manifests, until it happens. That doesn't mean you stay in your your thought or whatever. Just constantly bring that feeling back up and see it. Um, I had a teacher once who was telling me about conscious language and he always said, and, and in therapy and, and when you're helping someone, have them look into the future of how they want something to be and then actually live it and then move backwards into where you are now, knowing that that's what you choose to be. And that's the law of creation. It's pretty simple, but it works every time. It works every time 
as long as you can picture what you desire to be and have the feeling that you've already accomplished it. It's there. And you're just waiting for it to manifest, to take place in your world. Um, that's really what I had to say and wanted to share right now at this time. Uh, I encourage everybody to look any book of Neville Goodyard, any book. He's all, he talks throughout all of it and gives examples of his, his perception, which I've taken on his mind. I believe it wholeheartedly what I say. Uh, I practice it every day. So go find him. You can get him online. You can look at him free, but go check it out. Uh, back to you, Beth. All right. Thank you. Well, good, because I um, have some more information that um, is a little bit, a little bit different. Uh, it's not different. It's, it's, it includes everything that you're saying, uh, but it gets, brings it down to more the earthly realm in a way. <laughs> and, uh, and when I say in a way, um, and that is, um, well, basically what Terry just explained is there is no existence outside of the creator. Therefore, there's no outside. And uh, to me, that, that makes it easier. So within creator, the I am, or I am, as, as Terry just explained, is the same thing. It all is. But it's creating within so uh, some of the uh, information I received, um, and in one of my writings called Book of Eternal Life, uh, it, um, it says life on this planet is for existence of creator to experience itself in a form that co-creates with itself, us, right? Because yep. of this experience, all life forms shall be able to, to conduct themselves in the total life support system that is to manifest throughout all of creation. And uh, it goes on to say, patterns of manifestation are within creator, and we are the creators of patterns. So um, you, you start looking at patterns, and you can get into uh, geometry. And uh, do we have, I think we have a caller. It's, uh, Royce may be with us tonight. Are you there? Here I am. <laughs> right. Hey! Hey! Mighty <laughs> Yay! I'm glad you're here with us. But talking about patterns of creations, um, you um, have drawn quite a few and how that's worked out for you. Um, I wondered if you wanted to uh, say a little bit about that. Well, it's, you know, the more you look into the patterns, the more you understand what consciousness is all about. It It's Consciousness, um, it can be directed. And uh, if I, like, direct conscious my consciousness to, like, a cup of coffee, that's a straight line. So the, the geometry is within everything, you know. Um, draw a couple of lines and join them together with arcs, and, and you've created another pattern, so... It's just amazing to see how the consciousness moves in an orderly fashion, and and it can be drawn when it's uh, when we apply it to something that has been created or is in the process of being created. And and, and Royce, isn't that why it's called sacred geometry that you practice? Yeah. And, and makes sense. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bev, Bev, also what you said, uh, just to, to add, Neville makes one comment. He says, the conceiver and the conception are one. If your yeah. con- conception of yourself is less than that which you claim as true of God, you have robbed God, which is yourself. <laughs> huh. same, same thing you just said that in that book. That was really neat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's... Uh, I, uh, a couple more things that this writing talks about, which I find very interesting. It, it, uh, it goes on to say, uh, because all of, of all being within creator, right, then all life can be accessed, right? And, you know, that's what you're talking about, manifesting something in your life and, and as you focus and I am and, and our words and our focus that we use. I'm, I'm kind of simplifying what you said, Terry. Um, 
uh, but I wanted to go on because uh, it says how to do this, and the, and I, I had asked a question about it, and I, I'd like to share that with you all. And they said, focus your thought on a whirlwind spiral cloud. As it spins, focus your intent on any one aspect of creator. Form shall gather as you remain totally focused on this manifestation. All particles will come into place and you will see or sense your creation. Take this information into yourselves and you will see the other parts of yourself. You will know your former and future lives. Whoa. Um, that really goes along with what uh, Neville and Terry, what you're speaking of, and of course using geometry, it's all interwoven. You will witness others' creations as they intertwine with your creations. You will witness the intersecting and interlocked, interlocking of all creation. With this understanding and knowledge, you will know that all existence is the thoughts of creator in which you are all a part. Now, I asked a question about that, and I thought it was uh, explained pretty well. Um, and what I was told is, is, suppose you want to know why you may have a phobia in this life. And let's say that, it's, uh, that you're claustrophobe, uh, claustrophobic, and a lot of people are. Uh, and, of course, that means a morbid fear of narrow spaces or closed rooms. So with full intent, concentrate your wanting to find out why you have this condition. Suddenly, you will connect with a lifetime where fear came over you and uh, through the acts of man or perhaps you may have drowned. Once you relive this fearful episode, you concentrate on what happened next in that life. And perhaps you left your body and found yourself in another world. You will find that the drowning, drowning incident or death of that life just moved you to another place. So a beautiful, peaceful place. Therefore, you release that fear in your present-day condition of claustrophobia. So it's getting rid of some of those conditions that we have taken from lifetime to lifetime. So I find that uh, interesting that how to do that. As uh, a lot of people say, I don't know why I'm afraid of water or, I'm, or, or whatever, um, or going into a cave or, again, being locked up in a small space. And a lot of people don't want to relive it. But once you do and you pass out of your body and seeing how grand it is when you do, um, then it's like there's no fear of death or fear of being claustrophobic or whatever phobia you may have. So um, any comment on that? Because I know, Royce, you've had a near-death experience, and it was really quite nice. <laughs> so Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't afraid at all. And the, the overwhelming thing that I knew was that I was not alone. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was just overwhelming. Um, now, now, when I was out of my body, I, I still had more to do, so I wasn't going out there somewhere, you know, and my consciousness was, was hanging pretty close to the body. I was watching what was going on, um, but, but I still had that, that overwhelming sense of peace and that total knowing that I was not alone. That's nice. And I think it gives a lot of people assurance of, of who and what we are. Again, or how we started the show is be yourself. So uh, there you go. Any more comments on, on uh, this topic? Um, well, there, were, there was something that popped into my mind, and it reminded me of uh, something that I, that I wrote about the, the beginning and the end, the, the center being the beginning and the end within the heart of itself. And that was, you know, like when, when you're in that creative process, the consciousness from, from your innermost self to uh, focusing on something that you wish to create, that, that line is the beginning and the end of that thought, you know, that creative process. And then, it, it, of course, it goes on further. And so there's a beginning and a, the end of that. It goes in steps. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
I do. Okay. I definitely do. So it's whatever thought, there's a beginning and an end. Yes. And then you move on from that. So you can take yes, that. It doesn't mean it's finished. It's just the end of that part of the process. <laughs> part of process. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It makes sense to me um, because you take that information, if you so desire, even from one thought to another, right? And then, um, and then you can take this whole thing from one life to another, one lifetime to another lifetime. Even talking about being claustrophobic, um, sometimes we'll take again, we'll take that to another lifetime, um, and then we realize what we're doing. And um, you know, as as creators, we can let go of some of those um, programs or processes that we said, okay, I'm done with that, right? Yeah, those fears that we Here, don't need exactly, to carry exactly. along anymore. Yeah. 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 I know that, you know, for myself when when my consciousness is ready for me to get rid of something, it'll come up whether I'm aware that it's going to come up or not. <laughs> like like something will just tumble out of your mouth and you're like, Whoa, what was that? Like I was yeah. speaking with somebody one time, and I, and I said, "Oh man, I I don't care. I just don't want to burn again." And I looked at my friend. I said, well, "Where did that come from?" And it was from a past life. So I had to look at that and yeah. release the fear. You know? Yeah. Yep. We're sure. Yeah. I know. I've said this so many times. We certainly are amazing beings, and this yeah, whole journey of being in the body is is really. Uh, incredible to me. All right, any more any more comments on that, Terry? No, I'm I'm just all ears tonight. <laughs> all right. Well, you were also so gave a lot of good, wonderful information. All right. Do you want to get into some of the things uh, I was told today? And um, uh, uh, Terry and I were uh, meditating, and I I kept hearing. Uh, one thing was Star Spangled Banner, and and uh, I heard it like three or four times, and so I thought, okay, maybe I better look at this because it keeps repeating repeating itself. And then when I looked at that, I saw um, a row of American flags side by side, and uh, then as I'm looking at this, I noticed that the American flags have parted, and behind the flags and stepping up was the what was called the constitutionally elected president. And like him or not, it was President Trump. So um, there you go. Yeah, so, there are so many of us that are seeing it that way. You know, it's come up in visions. It's come up in meditations and dreams. Um, so, you know, the, the, the story is not finished. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not at all finished. And that takes me into um, uh, the 2021 outlook. And uh, I was, with Terry, I was um, just verbalizing what I was seeing and hearing. Um, and then afterwards I said, okay, what did I say? So, <laughs> so anyways, I sat down after that and I wrote the following. Um, and I think it captured uh, what I said. So, uh, and uh, if you want to add on to this, this is great. All right, 2021 Outlook. Your governmental systems, as well as your financial systems, will continue to make huge changes. What you see now will not be in place within the next few months. As in your year 2020, 2021 will look vastly different. Be patient as these changes are made. The whole world will seem like it has flipped. Be not dismayed. All is in divine order. And that's that. So, talk about 2020 being interesting. It looks like 2021 is going to be extremely interesting. So, Hold on to your seat, boys and girls. (laughs) Yes, yes. Talking about not and, being in fear, and it's like yeah. Oh, and what what I what I'd like to say to that, I come back to this quite often. Uh, you, you can tell that, that Rick 
that has, husband who has passed, had a great influence on me and helped me center because I was, you know, I'm an Aries. Now, I'm an old Aries, <laughs> but when I was a young Aries boy, I was hard to control, and I like controlling everything. And, you know, so when Rick brought up the thing um, that – Stay centered. Don't get caught into the drama because this is what we see. We're seeing a drama. Two sides are playing out their drama. It doesn't matter what side you're on. It's a drama. And you really can see it for that if you stay centered and they don't get caught up in the dichotomy of choosing sides. It's, yeah. harder, it, it's harder not to choose sides. How, what am I? It, it's hard not to choose sides. But when you don't choose sides, and you just observe and stay centered, it's amazing what you see. Yeah. And you don't get caught up, and you don't get emotionally involved, and your life is an up, up topsy-turvy like the times might happen. But your life isn't. Remember, what I told you tonight, you can change your circumstance uh, from anything you want. It's true. I, the formula that I gave you tonight is how you can change any circumstance that is you're encountering in your world now. One other thing that that you could start with is using the Ho'oponopono blessing of if something's bothering you, take responsibility for it and simply say, whatever in me is causing that thing to be, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I mean, th- those simple things, just saying that it has a tremendous amount of power in what happens in your world. And you don't need to go, to go into learn about the I am and the I am that I am. So that phrase right there, encountered anything that is upsetting you or you'd like to see change, that can change it in a heartbeat. When I say heartbeat, it could happen instantaneously, but more than likely, like everything else, you ha- it has to be in the womb, and you have to feel it, see it, and, be- and mean it, and then time will take care, and, the- and it transforms itself. Just like a baby doesn't pop out, it takes nine months, it is developing and stuff. That's the nurturing, the wombing time. Same thing with thoughts, feelings, and energy. doesn't mean it can't happen instantly, you know, in a flick of an eye, but that means you're pretty centered, you, you know how to direct energy, and you know you're, feeling, you're, under, you're in control of your feelings, and so your feelings can manifest instantaneously. That makes sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're all saying uh, much the same thing in, in different ways, and it's, um, I love to, to see that because it gives people, our, ourselves and people, tools to work with in their lives so they don't get caught up in 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 the drama because Correct. it certainly doesn't do you any good and, and yeah and we all we all get caught up in the drama right bev and Rose, well, yeah we i mean I, I guess a bit we all have especially <laughs> recently it's like what the heck's I mean, going we're, on <laughs> we're in a dichotomy world and that's part of what is, the experience is doesn't necessarily mean we have to stay there but we all do it <laughs> Yeah, but, but you know the, the the world is um is changing. It has to change. If it I mean that's laws of physics. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, life has to change. It has to keep moving because if it doesn't there there is an explosion. And that's a a, a bit drastic of a way to to allow the change to come about. So if if we can just just let go of it and realize that change needs to take place, it has to take place, and uh, it's movement. Just look at it as movement. Mm-hmm. You're talking about movement. Uh, you know, nine months in the womb, and it moves out of the out into the world, and then yeah. the child grows, and it's always moving to new realizations, right. new perceptions. And we can look at ourselves as that because we are, our perceptions are changing. There's a turnabout going on right now. This is all part of the, if you want to call it divine plan, but who set this up? We all did. And because we're all part of creator. And we're all in this together. And so that's been used along uh, in this uh, COVID-19. We're all in this together. Yes, we are. 
So, but you look at it a little bit differently, and not as a victim st- stance, but as we're changing our perception of life. So, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've, we've come to the half hour. Um, if, if, uh, last chance for any of us to share something. Take as much time as you want. If not, um, I'll open it up for, for you guys. But also for our listening audience, our next session will be on Tuesday, December 1st. So we'd like to wish all of you a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Um, and don't eat too much. <laughs> or, eat, or eat a lot, whatever your preference is. <laughs> whatever you choose. Yeah. Would, any, would well, you ladies like to say any final words? Um, sure. Um, just, again, be yourself. And, and uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, your own fraudulent actions are being exposed. And that means, are we really loving ourselves? And uh, I think we talked about that a couple episodes ago, and I was hearing, no, you're not. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> okay. So, as, you know, we can't fraud ourselves. And so it's like love ourselves wholly and unconditionally. And, and if we want to make those changes, we can, you know, we've got the tools to do it. And that's what tonight's episode is all about. So it's, uh, again, love it. Love life. See it in a different way. And, um, and you'll find out as you do it, other people will feel that pull and it will then be repeated, 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 you know, the, the 100th monkey effect type thing. And so it's very important for us to remain centered. And if we, you know, sometimes if we get into that whatever uh, feeling of like what next going on and you feel like you're down, which, you know, I have to admit, I felt it. Um, and it's like, what am I doing? And then you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you move on. And uh you know, that's uh, what Royce has said, movement. So, anyway, we wish you all happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, Royce, I'll let you uh, speak what you want to, to uh, tell the audience. Well, I, just, I was just thinking about how beautiful life really is. It, you don't have to look hard to, to see it, you know. Um, we, sometimes, uh, well, like we were talking about, you know, we see all the gobbledygook going on, but... but when you just start off the day, like I start off on the patio with my co- cup of coffee, and I just observe and just feel myself becoming one with everything, and it just feels so good and so right. It is, it is truly a beautiful planet we live on, and um, we are all beautiful people in our hearts. We are beautiful. Life is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this session of Conscious Gatherers. Um, We'll send out the link in an email. um, And until two weeks from now, be safe, love each other, and give everybody a hug at Thanksgiving. See you all later. All right. Good night. Good night.